Well, good morning everyone and welcome to Hills Church Online this morning. It is so great to have you with us and I just invite you to come wherever you are, in your lounge rooms, on the deck, wherever, just come and join us and worship Jesus this morning. There is no one and there is nothing better than him. Let's sing this song together. Disasters the world Treasures 
Words that fade are never enough But you came along To put me back together And every desire is now satisfied God, you're the only one. You're the only one who can help us when we are feeling like there is just nowhere else to go. 
God, you are our deliverance and you are our redeemer. You are our way maker. And we just want to give you all the praise and all the glory this morning. Lord, we worship you. We worship you for who you are. And we invite you into our homes this morning and into our hearts. In Jesus' name. Stop working, never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you work it. Even when I don't feel it, you work it. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working.
That is who you are. 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 Thank you, God, that you are a God who makes a way and you were entirely faithful. And this morning, God, we stand upon your faithfulness. We consider the fact that you've always been faithful to us. Regardless of the season that we're in, we, we find strength knowing that you are with us and that you are faithful to the needs that we have. And God, today we bring, we bring those needs to you and we ask that you might step in and take control and make a way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, good morning, Hills Church. It's so good to see you. So good for you to be able to join us, whether you're joining us from the other side of the planet, whether you're in Australia, whether you're in your bed. It's awesome that you can be part of our church service today. I want to say welcome to you, if, especially if you're new. And at the top of our Facebook post, you will find a link to leave your details. We'd love to make a phone call and connect with you this week and say hi. The best way to stay connected to Hills Church right now is our website, which is Hills Church. .org.au. And if you scroll down just a touch from the top of the page, you'll find four links and they are got questions, volunteer, I have a need and give. We just encourage you to be able to use each of those links this week at some point as the need arises. Just a reminder to stay connected to your church and to each other as best as you can right now through whichever means works for you. And just a reminder to join us on the deck after church this morning. This morning we're going to pray for a person in our church who for security reasons I'm not going to go into detail but many of you who belong to Hills will know the scenario and you will know this person who is, who is a missionary today for Jesus. So we want to pray for that situation and you're welcome to contact me if you've got any questions about this. Let's pray together. Lord we pray uh, God for this situation. God, for all our missionaries this morning, but particularly for this one who we have in mind today. Lord, we thank you that the coronavirus has not got close to where this person is. And we thank you, God, for safety and your provision in this area. We ask God for your empowering and your blessing on this missionary and for all our missionaries today, wherever they are across the world and whatever they're doing. Lord, we ask for your resourcing and your blessing on each and every one of them. And God, we ask that you might use the offering and all that is given to the church this week as a way to, to grow your kingdom and serve your kingdom and that your kingdom actually may expand in this time as people ask questions and they need to find hope. God, we pray that you might help your church to be the hands and feet of Jesus today and this week. In your name, amen. Quakes before, moved by the sound of his voice. Season of shaken and stirred. Can we come to broken for my regard? Through it all.
Hey Hills Kids, today we're talking about the armor of God. So, the armor reminds me of what the Romans used to wear back in the day, the Roman soldiers. So they would put on the helmet, put on the, they would get the sword, and all the other gear. And that would get them to be stronger. Because it was heavy, but every day they would wear it, they would get stronger and stronger from that. And we can choose to put on the armor of God. I have with me my backpack, and it's quite heavy. It's got my laptop in here, my camera, and a couple of other gear, and it weighs quite a bit. But the good thing is, because I wear it every day, it, it makes me stronger. I can actually run with that thing, which is pretty cool. So we can choose to pick up our shield of faith. So this is in your craft. It has the banner of faith. And it has a shield as well, which is pretty cool. So why do we have the shield of faith? The shield protects us. So the Roman soldiers, when they were in battle, the arrows would come flying at them, and they would use that shield to protect them from the enemy. 
we can use our faith to protect us as well. And it says in the Bible that faith, as small as a mustard seed, can move mountains. That's pretty awesome. So no, so no matter how big the enemy attacks is, no matter what he throws our way, we can be protected by a shield of faith. Because even a small amount of faith is way more powerful than what the enemy can throw at us. We can choose to take up God's armor because of what he has done for us. He has saved us and he is powerful. We can stand strong and be protected. So we're going to read, I'm going to read a verse from Psalms 140, verse 7. Lord and King, you save me because you are strong. You are like a shield that keeps me safe in the day of battle. So let's choose to pick up God's armor and stand up to anything. Let's pray. Mighty God, I thank you, Lord, that we can use our shield of faith to protect us when things are a bit difficult. Thank you, Lord, that you love each and every one of us. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. So we have a cool pack for you guys. But if you would like to receive a pack from us, that's awesome. Just go to our Hills Church website and click on the I have a need. Fill out your details there and we'll send a pack to you. Have a great day, guys. See ya. Good morning, church. It's so good to be with you this morning. Mark 4, 24 says, Consider carefully what you hear, he continued. With the measure you use it, it will be measured to you, and even more. This is the Bible passage that has been at the core of the sermon series that we've been going through the last few weeks. And Pastor Nathan encouraged Pastor Steve, Pastor Adam, and myself to think about what God has been speaking to us about in this season. Pastor Nathan shared about the importance of trust. Pastor Steve spoke on worship and what that looks like in our everyday life. And Pastor Adam spoke on opportunities, which all of these things I believe are relevant in the everyday life of a Christian. But before we get into what I believe God has been speaking to me about, let's pray. Lord God, we just thank you for today. Lord God, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would fall on each of us wherever we are today. And Lord God, that our hearts would be open and receptive to what you're speaking um, to us about today. In your precious name, amen. As some of you know, a few months ago, I took a trip to America. And when I left, there wasn't really much talk of coronavirus. It was only about halfway through my trip that things started to get serious. And I ended up having to cut my trip short. And when I came home was made to do my 14 day self isolation, which was a bit of a downer after my holiday, but I managed it pretty well. I had a little routine and tried to give purpose to each day. And on one of these days I was sitting in my back courtyard and I was getting a bit of fresh air when all of a sudden a plane flew over and I was in shock. Why was this plane so loud? I just kept looking up into the sky with a look of confusion. Why was this plane so loud? Was it flying low? And to be honest, it flew over and I didn't really think anything more of it. Then again, two days later, another plane flew over. Why were the planes so loud? And I started to think about it. Why did they seem so loud? And then the thought dawned on me. There hadn't really been any planes flying over because all the flights had been canceled. This noise, which normally was so frequently heard, had become background noise, white noise to me. But when it stopped, and when the rest of the other white noise stopped, and I was living in this silence, this plane sounded so loud. And I felt like in that moment, God said to me, isn't it amazing what you can hear when you just be quiet. <laughs> Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. 
For me personally, I'm on a journey as I move into ministry and navigate what that looks like. And I often ask God what the next step is. And I feel like lately I haven't really heard any direction from God. So you better believe in that moment I felt convicted. I felt my soul be pierced by the word of God. Not in a condemning way, but it was almost like a cry from God. He desperately wants to speak into my life, but it's so easy to allow the noise of other things in life to block his voice. Isaiah 55.3 says, Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Hear that your soul may live. Which makes me think, if we aren't hearing, then we aren't going to be living. So it's pretty important then that we're hearing God. But then why don't we hear from God? I just want to warn you that you might feel challenged by this message today, and that's okay. The reality is, is that when we can see our flaws, we can begin to grow ourselves and our relationship with God. So this next passage, it might sting a little, but I know we can get through this together. John 8, 40, John 8, 47 says, whoever is of God, hears the word of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. Ouch. But let's not forget that it's convicting, not condemning. There is a difference. God is always speaking to us. C.S. Lewis said, God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks in our conscience, but shouts in our pain. It is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. Perhaps we can't hear because we don't come expecting to hear from God. We might know in our heads that God can speak to us, but in our hearts, we doubt that he actually will. Perhaps it's because you're scared to hear the answer that God has for you. If you know the story of Jonah, you know that he was called to minister in Nivea, but he didn't want to go and he ran from God. Perhaps you're like Jonah and you know that God wants you to do something that you don't want to do. I will disclaimer that it didn't end well for Jonah trying this technique. For some, I think we are actually hearing God, but we're not getting the answer that we want. Perhaps you're praying to God, but you're not leaving room for him to speak. Dear God, would you speak to me today? Amen. And then God goes, hang on, I was going to say something before you cut me off. Or perhaps you just have so much to say that God can't even get a word in. But when I looked at all of these things, I realized that the overall reason that we don't hear God is because we don't create a space and a heart to hear because we're worried, fearful, in a rush, or because we don't understand the importance of hearing God. And in doing so, in not creating a space for relationship and not bringing a heart to hear, we're actually distancing ourselves from God. God is always speaking to us. But sometimes we allow the noise and the hustle and bustle of life to make his voice fade into the background. And we cry out and we say, why can't I hear from you as our ears are bombarded with the noise of other things? You know, it's funny, when I started to write this message, I went into my kitchen to make a cup of tea and you know, I started to talk to God. What do you want me to say? Will you speak to me? And I realized I was trying to hear God with the kettle on and the washing machine on. I mean, I couldn't even hear my own thoughts, let alone the voice of God. And I think sometimes we do that far too often. We don't create a space for ourselves to actually hear God. We're trying to listen to God, but he, comes, he becomes like the plane. He becomes a background noise. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. 
If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with, he with me. God is knocking on our doors. God is crying out to let us, let, God is crying out to us to let him speak into our lives. So then, what is the importance of God? The Bible is the word of God. If we have a question about morals or values, we can hear what God has to say from that. But often the things we come to God about are to do with personal situations and decisions. But that's not all that God wants to be speaking to us about. He wants to help with the big decisions of life, but he also wants to challenge us and lead us to opportunities to bring people to him. He wants to encourage us, prepare us, and so much more. I felt very challenged in writing this message. Reading through these Bible passages, I've become aware of just how vitally important hearing God is to our walk. Matthew 7, 21 to 23 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, do we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, evildoers. This verse says it very plainly. How do we enter the kingdom of heaven? How do we have life? By doing the will of God. And in doing and how do we do the will of God? By being in relationship with him. Isaiah 30, 21 says, And your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it, when you turn to the right or when you turn to the left. Following Christ is a free gift that costs you your whole life. As a young person, I really struggled with what I wanted to do with my life. And I said to my mum, I feel like I have no purpose in my life, no direction. I don't know what God wants me to do. And my mum said, you do know. The purpose of your life is to love God and do his will wholeheartedly. Isn't it so frustrating when mums are right? <laughs> if we keep moving forward and investing in our relationship with God, he will guide and direct us. Because being in relationship with God is like any relationship. It takes work and you have to invest in it. I want you to think about someone that you're close to. It could be a spouse, your parent, a best friend. I want you to think about how you interact with them. How do you maintain that relationship? Are there many times you sit together and you do all the talking and then you just get up and walk away? Probably not. Having a relationship with someone is about give and take. You both communicate and learn about each other. It's the same with God. A one-sided conversation doesn't exactly build your relationship. Mark 4, 24, take heed how you hear. For with the same measure that you hear, it will be measured back to you. The importance of hearing God is that it brings us into relationship and fellowship with God. It allows us to know his will and it brings us into his kingdom. Matthew 4, 4 says, but he answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And in doing this, in being in relationship with God, by discovering his will for us, our faith will grow and blossom. Listening for God is actually for our benefit. So then, how do we hear God? God speaks to each of us in different ways. Some people hear the audible voice of God. Some people are spoken to through other people. Or perhaps you've just had a thought pop into your head that was actually the prompting of God. God speaks to us all in a way that helps us to grow and trust him. 
but how do we actually hear from him? Well, I think there's a couple of ways. Firstly, as I've spoken about, a great way to hear from God is to remove ourselves from the distractions around us. My dad loves cricket. And when he watches it, he gets into the zone. And I can say things to him and he just doesn't respond. And I say, dad, dad, dad. And then a minute will pass and he'll say, what? You have to be in the right space to hear. Go for a walk. Listen to some worship music. Bring yourself into a space that allows you to hear from God. Jesus did that. Many times he walked up a mountainside or removed himself from his disciples to come into the presence of God. Matthew 6.6 6 says, But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. It can be hard, I get it. Days can go by so quickly. But I need to stress to you, finding time to be with God needs to be a priority. Another way to ensure that our hearts are prepared to hear from God, oh, another way is to ensure that our hearts are prepared to hear from God. If we are not ready to hear from God, then we're not gonna hear from him. Marilena Facarell said, do you want to just hear God just out of curiosity to see what he might say and then vote on it if you will obey or not? Or do you want to hear God because you trust him with what he tells you and you've already made up your mind that you will be obedient? God will many times not speak to you to do something if he detects in your heart that you are not really interested in obeying. Having your heart in the right place is so important when it comes to hearing from God. Lastly, listening to God is a spiritual discipline. Daniel Reynolds said, listening to God is a discipline requiring practice. The primary way to do so is through the word written and spoken. The word provides the standard by which to measure all other sources of hearing God, hence its absolute centrality. Listening for God is something we have to practice. It's like any new skill that we want to perfect. And when we do these things and we begin to hear God, it will become easier and easier. John 10, 27 says, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they know me. I'm not sure if you've ever answered the phone and you can instantly identify who it is just by their voice. You're so familiar with them. You're so accustomed to hearing that voice that you know exactly who it is. And it's the same with God. When we start to recognize the voice of God, you'll begin to hear him more often. You'll be able to identify him speaking to you more and more. You know what, church? I'm standing here today in front of you on that same journey. And I know it's hard. It can be incredibly frustrating when you feel like you're crying out to God and you're not hearing from him. And if that's the case, I would wanna encourage you to seek help. Maybe gather some trusted friends to pray for you. Perhaps you could go away for a weekend and just sit and wait upon the Lord. Or I would even highly recommend fasting. Fasting allows us to rely wholly on God and it can help us become more in tune to his voice. Ezra 8.23 says, So we fasted and earnestly prayed that our God would take care of us, and he heard our prayer. This morning you might have something on your heart that you're hoping to hear from God about. And I want you to ask yourself, are you setting yourself up in a space that will help you hear from God? Are you coming to God in an attitude that is prepared to hear from him no matter what? Because this is what we need to be doing to hear from God. Jeremiah 33.3 3 says, Call to me 
and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. It is so important. Being in healthy relationship with God is vital to our eternity. God is ready and willing to speak into your life today. Are you ready and willing to hear from him? Let's pray. Lord God, we just, we just ask that your Holy Spirit would fill us this morning. Lord God, help us to come to you in an attitude that is prepared and ready to hear from you. Lord God, would you speak into our lives in a way that helps us to grow, that helps us to come closer to you, Lord God. We just thank you for the sacrifice that you've made for us and that you are seeking us out every day, Lord God. Help us to seek you out also. We just thank you for all of these things in your precious name. Amen. Thanks for joining us today, church. It's been great having you with us. If you go to our Facebook page now, you'll find a group there called On The Deck. And Kerry and Adam are gonna be there live and they're gonna greet you and they're gonna talk about what's been going on in the life of the church. And they're gonna talk a little bit about Claire's message today as well. So we invite you to join us there. This week, don't forget uh, our prayer meeting is every, is Wednesday night at 6.30 and we invite you to join us online on our Facebook page then as well. Also next week, here's an exciting thing. We're gonna start a brand new series in the book of James. We're gonna make our way through the whole book and there's so much good stuff in there. This series is gonna be called More Than Words. And so why don't you join us next Sunday at nine o'clock when we'll begin that series. But once again, thanks for being with us. Have a great week. God bless.